Could we have our first question, please? Thank you. My name is Paul Harriman. My question is, should Julian Assange be extradited? Uh, Julian Assange is now in custody. The American government seeks to extradite him, uh, to charge him with a federal conspiracy charge uh, that has a maximum five-year sentence. Jared Batten, should he be extradited? Right. I know a little bit about this case because when I was a spokesman on uh, Home Affairs for UKIP, uh, I got involved with quite a few victims of European arrest warrants, and that included Mr. Massange, and I met his legal team and went into some detail with this with him, and I actually, with others, made a representation to the Supreme Court that he shouldn't be extradited, which obviously they, uh, they, owe, they reached their own decision on that. Nobody should be extradited on a European arrest warrant. It attacks the most fundamental freedoms that we have from arbitrary arrest and imprisonment. Under a European arrest warrant, by the way, which is not, it's not now called extradition, it is uh, under a system of mutual recognition, it is called judicial surrender. Every legal system in the European Union is treated entirely equally. So, whereas the courts in this country used to have the power to look at prima facie evidence and protect people from unjust extradition, they now no longer have that power, and extradition is now just a bureaucratic formality. My view at the time, and it's exactly the same now, is that he should have, we could have saved £13 million of this wasted money by actually sending Mr Assange back to Australia, where he is a citizen, and the Australians could have decided whether they were going to extradite him to Sweden or whether they were going to extradite him to the USA. We are, we are where we are now. Well, what we let should me, let do... me ask you the question, which is pretty central to this. Where we are now, should the... Leave aside for a second the Swedish case, which has been very clearly uh, 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 dealt with, if you like, and you've just touched on it. Should the Americans be able to extradite, or should, as the Labour leader has said, should the government stop that? Yes, because the European extradition treaty is just as bad as the European arrest warrant. Although prima facie... But in the case of the United Kingdom, it's well, not a European arrest warrant, it's a direct relationship between yes, the United and I, States and the United Kingdom. Yeah, and I just said the US um, arrest treaty, uh, warrant, sorry, extradition treaty is just as bad as the European arrest warrant. Although the court is allowed to see prima facie evidence, it cannot actually object to surrender. And this is a one-way treaty because the same thing does not apply to American citizens that we might want to extradite back to this country. It is a totally one-way system. It was agreed by, I think, Jack Straw under a Labour government. It's unbelievable that we allow our citizens to be sent off extradited without the court having much power to stop it, and yet the Americans will not allow the same thing in the other direction. If, if I was able to make the decision now, I would put Mr Assange on a plane to Australia that's where he's a citizen. It should be up to them to decide whether he is going to be extradited to Sweden or to the USA. One of the reasons that he's, him and his legal team strongly objected to going to Sweden was because they feared that the Americans would find it more easy to actually take him from Sweden. And, of course, while I'm not an apologist for WikiLeaks or nor Mr Assange, we wouldn't know that some American helicopter pilots kill people for fun if it hadn't been for the videos that Mr Assange published on the internet. Um, not all secret information should be published, and governments have a right to privacy in some areas as much as individuals. But the fact remains that they have told us that atrocities are going on, which the Americans are responsible for, and I think that is a great revelation and of use to the public. Thank you. Does the panel see the EU Brexit extension as a lifeline or a noose? Jerry Batten, do you look forward to campaigning against uh, Nigel Farage in the, U in the Euros? <laughs> well, to answer Barbara's question in uh, precise terms it was put, is it uh, a lifeline or a noose, then it's a noose. And it's entirely in keeping with what I predicted back in 2014 uh, when, I, when the referendum was just a promise on the horizon, and I wrote a little book called uh, The Road to Freedom, and I said if there is a referendum, the political establishment and the media establishment will do everything they possibly can to delay the process, to impede the process with the intention of overturning it. And here we are, nearly three years later, exactly where I said we would be. This uh, is a device to actually present, stop us leaving the European Union, and the trap, unfortunately, was sprung right at the beginning, which was Article 50. If you try to leave by Article 50, and I, I've laid out ex, uh, you know, in some uh, detail how this would happen, we would be prevented from doing so. The only way that you were ever going to leave the European Union would be if a government 
the government of the day, immediately after the referendum, repealed the 1972 European Communities Act, left under our law, and then explained to the European Union how it was going to work. Given where we are now, and uh, you expect the European elections yeah. to take place, um, do you think that voters, when they have to choose, perhaps, between you and Nigel Farage? I think it will be a choice, actually, and I, I, I agree with Sal here. It's really going to be a choice between the, the kind of Lib Dems, who are completely unequivocal Remainers, and UKIP, who are completely unequivocal Leavers. We don't know what Some we... of your Leavers are your own MEPs. Though, in fact, you've got some seven left of the original 24. Many of those who left um, have, to, have, have now gone to Nigel Farage. So when it comes to people, when you're attracting votes, do you believe that people will be attracted to a party whose leader shares well, a platform with Tommy Robinson and who says that, well, that we'll... Islam glorifies death and is a I, death I wondered cut. how long it take you to get onto Tommy Robinson and you've managed to make 25 minutes, so that's not bad. Uh, he's not a member of the party and he's not a candidate. When people come to vote in those elections, and I agree you're quite right about the problems that we've had with those candidates who were selected under Nigel's regime and not mine, uh, they will have a choice of voting for people who stand up for leave, unequivocal, unconditional unilateral withdrawal, and candidates who have gone to join the Brexit party who gave a solemn undertaking when they became candidates for UKIP that should they ever leave the party, they would hand the seat back to UKIP, including Mr Farage, who castigated other MEPs who did reneged on their promise, and then he reneged on his. So when people are looking for principled, a principled party with principled candidates, then they need to look at UKIP and not elsewhere. And do they, when they look at you and they see someone who repeats his view, that Islam is a death cult, that Islam glorifies death. Do you, do you hope to attract people well, with, not, that, with that sentiment? A, a, a lot of people actually agree with what I've said on that. And whether they agree or disagree... Whether they, whether, they, whether, whether they agree or disagree, the election is about our position in the European Union and do we want to leave or remain. If you want to remain, you can vote Liberal Democrat. Um, you don't quite know what you're getting if you vote Labour or Conservative because they don't seem to know either. Uh, so you have two clear choices, a clear choice to leave or a che clear choice to remain. And do you vote for a proper political party that has a constitution, members that have a vote to decide the leadership, policies and a manifesto, or do you vote for a party that is really a vehicle for one man, that has no constitution, no governing body, no members, just subscribers who hand over money? Do you want to vote for a real political party or a vehicle for an individual? Does the panel think that the planned no-fault divorce laws will increase or decrease the number of divorces? Gerard Batten. Well, I can't remember who said it, but somebody once said divorce should be made easier, but marriage should be made harder to actually uh, do. Um, I don't, whether it will add to the figures or not, I, I can't say. I think that will, that will only be known in the test of time. But I certainly don't think that there is any, any reason to make it hard for people to divorce who've actually decided that they don't want to be together anymore. Um, so I would think that no-fault divorce is something that's beneficial, but perhaps different rules should apply for couples who have children under 18, because their, their welfare must be paramount in deciding what's best. So um, I don't have a detailed explanation of how that would be different, but I think maybe they should be slightly different, more, slightly more difficult to get divorced if you have dependent children under 18. Stamford's just been uh, listed as one of the top UK towns for quality of life again. Um, what do the panel consider to be the essential elements of a good place to live? The essential elements of a good place to live. Gerard Batten. Well, I know you're going to think I'm trying to butter you up, but I've never actually been to Stamford before, and on the walk from the station, I was struck by how nice it actually is and the way the new buildings, um, the new houses and new flats actually blend in with the old ones, and it, it really looked to me like a very nice place. And I did notice one or two nice pubs and restaurants as well on the way. What constitutes a good place to live? I think the surroundings. I think it's very important if there's some greenery, although I live in central London, I was lucky that we're opposite some greenery where my children were small, they could play there and just somewhere to go and have a walk. I think that's very important, especially in big cities, that there are green spaces, parks, where people can go and relax and enjoy that. I think it's very important if you've got good neighbours that you get on with um, and a decent pub close by. <laughs> Harmony between different 
cultures, races and religions. Well, I live in the... I live in the... I live in the London borough of Newham, where I am an ethnic minority, and I get along fine with everybody, and they get along fine with me.